Hi everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. Today we're at Morgan Buick GMC to take a look at the 2022 Buick Envision ST and see if we can answer the question based on information presented. Is this Envision a more sporty SUV than the Volvo XC60? Well, judging by the black exterior color and those 245-45 tires wrapped around the black 20-inch rims, I think we're off to a pretty solid start to say that, yeah, this has a very sporty look to it. Tell me down in the comments what your preference is. If you were going to buy one of these Envisions, would you rather have the chrome rims or these black rims? Now, you will find the Buick logo in chrome, or at least with some chrome accent on it right there on the center cap, but an overall very sporty looking vehicle. One of the main things that you're going to want to know about as far as how sporty a vehicle is, let's open the hood on this model and see what you can expect to find there. Okay, here under the hood of the Envision is the two liter turbocharged four cylinder. It makes 228 horsepower and 258 foot pounds of torque. It's mated to a nine speed automatic transmission and you can go with either front wheel drive or all wheel drive on these Envision models. When comparing horsepower to the XC60, well, it is making I think, 247 horsepower. So there is gonna be a little bit of a difference there, but the real thing it's gonna really tell the two apart is handling. So we'll find out when we get out on the road for our test drive, but there are some differences here between two wheel drive and all wheel drive or front wheel drive and all wheel drive when it comes to the MPGs. Let's talk about what those are. MPGs come in with front wheel drive at 24 miles per gallon city and 31 highway for front wheel drive. For all wheel drive, you're gonna be looking at 22 city and 29 out on the highway. And I guess I just can't help but mention this. I am glad that you don't have to go hunting around if you open the hood for a rod to manually prop things up. You do have the hydraulic struts right here. I think that's a win, at least for a gearhead like myself. And a quick look at the remote, pretty easy to figure out what's here. Lock, unlock, everybody's favorite remote start, and you have the power tailgate. We'll take a look at that a little bit closer in just a minute. Now you do have the power side view mirrors, power adjustable. They are manually folding side view mirrors. You also have passive entry via the button right here, not only on the front doors, but on the rear doors as well. And the thing I like here is that you can lock and unlock everything from the rear door. For you parents out there, that is a win because that's gonna allow you most likely, I mean, coming here first, you can unlock all of the interior very easily from that point. And speaking of sporty, the overall roof line definitely gives the Envision a very sporty look. Everything just leading back here to the rear roof spoiler. You're going to have a power rear lift gate. So let's see here if we can show this in the video real quick. We're just gonna run our foot underneath there. And as you can see, it's gonna open up. If it doesn't do it as quickly as you think it should, don't worry, it's going to come up. Not a big deal. Now, this doesn't have anything to do with being sporty. 52.8 cubic feet. Now, I will say the Envision definitely doesn't have as much cargo space as does the Volvo XC60, but we're about to see something in just a couple of minutes that's definitely gonna show an area where the Envision shines big time over the Volvo XC60. And if you want to maximize cargo space, well, that's not difficult to do at all. We're just gonna go right here. We're gonna pull on this latch and we're just gonna do one side here, but that's how you maximize your cargo space. Very easy to use. Everything back here, obviously power. And if you want to just hit the button up here to close this power rear lift gate, you can, or you can use your foot again to swipe under the bumper to use that feature as well. And hopping back into the interior here, let's take a look at exactly what we'll find. Something that definitely gives this Envision a very sporty look compared to any XC60 I've seen so far is going to be the red piping right here around the seats, the trim right there, that looks great. I wish that honestly Buick had put that red in here as well with the contrast stitching, although the white doesn't look bad, but it just seems like it would be so much more sporty looking if it were red. Nice size door bin right here. You can put a good size blender bottle of protein powder right there. You're going to have the seat back pockets right here on both sides. Now keep in mind, both seats are back pretty far. So, but I still have quite a bit of room. I actually can 
stick my feet pretty far underneath there. Most likely, the seat's not going to always be this far back, so that would make a big difference for the rear seat passengers. And then, what will they find back here as far as convenience? You've got dual air conditioning vents, also the USB ports right there. And, let's see here if we can show you, we'll get positioned just right for that, the fold-down armrest with the cup holders built in. And one more thing. That one more thing is going to be the panoramic sunroof, a very large panoramic sunroof, by the way. In fact, let me hop back into the interior here and try and give you the best view that I can from basically my POV, my point of view. And yes, that front section does slide forward and open up. And for you parents out there that are gonna have child safety seats in the rear seats of this Envision, here's something that I really like. You don't have to pull these out, the covers on the latch system right here. I like the fact that it just stays in place right there. That is a win and a really nice convenience. That way you don't have something that you're gonna probably lose in the long run. I know this isn't out of the ordinary for the Envision, but just the way the air conditioner kind of tapers down to that little point right there gives it, well, a sporty look. I like that. And the gloveless glove box. I'm still waiting to find some gloves when I open the glove box on one of these vehicles. It hasn't happened yet. And right here, the Bombay doors, kind of Mercedes-Benz-like, bombs away, right? So you've got the Mercedes-Benz style Bombay doors, or is it that the Mercedes-Benz have the Buick Envision style Bombay doors? I don't know, it could be either way, right? But you can see there is a lot of space down in there within the center console, quite a bit of space there. Here are your cup holders, but there's a whole lot more here to talk about. We need to start the engine to talk about those. And as far as opening the rear lift gate, take a look at the button right here. You're going to notice that you can open it full or one third of the way. And if it doesn't open, make sure you check to see if this button is off. If you go back there and you swipe your foot for the hands-free function, make sure to come here and check this button first to make sure that it's not set to off. And that way you avoid any potential problems. And taking a look up here, you have seat memory for the driver, two different settings there. And then when we take a look here at all the different buttons on the door panel here on the armrest on the driver's side, you'll notice everything for the power mirrors, all your windows, all that good stuff. But if you notice what's missing, it's the child safety locks. And that is because they are back here on the rear doors. In fact, I locked myself in accidentally because this lock was in that position. When it's in the forward position or kind of to your right, maybe towards the front of the vehicle, however you want to look at that, that means that the lock is in use. In fact, you have one on each door, whether it's here on the left-hand side or on the other side, on the passenger side door. Make sure to check those before you hop back there, especially if you're out alone. We're going to go ahead and hit the button to fire everything up. You have some very nice looking graphics that come up on the screen and a pretty simplistic system right here as far as the dashboard goes, but simplistic is not always a bad thing. You still get everything you need there and you can go through quite a bit of information as far as what you want to look at. In fact, we'll just run through a few things that you can check out depending on what you want to see and what you need to know about your vehicle. Obviously, we could probably do just an entire video just on these options alone. And one thing to check out here, let's see here if I can give you a good view of it right here, kind of hard to do, but right here, is going to be the control settings or the controls for your heads up display and i'll show you what all you have there it's a very nice bright heads up display a lot of good information you can change the position you can change the brightness and you can go through a lot of different information depending on what you want to see there very nice very useful very easy to use and you do have multiple driving modes so you can use the shifter paddles here which are nice and large actually kind of large for a smaller suv like this i like that and there is the control for turning on the blinkers. That This model does have the blinker option. If you're wondering, it is here. I could do a tutorial on how to use that in a future video if you don't know, especially you Shreveport drivers, because I know a lot of you don't. And I can't say anything sarcastic here about the control on the right-hand side of the steering wheel for the windshield wipers, front and rear window wipers. But one thing I definitely want to cover here that a lot of you should like, and I know this, again, doesn't have to do with anything about sportiness between the 
Envision and the XC40. But here is something that is really important. A much easier to use infotainment screen. And you can even get to your cameras and see your overhead view. And as you can see, you have a few different options here as far as the cameras go, as far as what you can see. You can turn your trajectory lines on and off if you want to right there. And then the side view, it's all here. It's a very nice view. I really like what we have. And overall, just a very simple system to use. One thing that's a big advantage over the XC60 is that you have physical buttons right here. Instead of having to go into the infotainment screen to control the air conditioner, I really like that. That is a win in my personal opinion. Everything here, pretty simple to figure out as far as what's here. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, you can pair your smartphone and basically turn the screen into your phone if you're wondering what that is. Very easy to do. And then more connectivity right down here, as you can see, including the 12 volt power outlet. We'll get that to stay open so you can see that for just a second. And then some one touch buttons right here. You can turn that pesky auto stop start feature off, or if you like it, you can turn it back on. Lane keeping assist, traction control, everything here that's pretty easy to figure out. Now, tell me down in the comments here. I know a lot of people are not fans of these push button shifters. What are your thoughts and opinions and tell me why and last but not least, obviously you see the cup holders right there. I probably don't need to tell you too much about that. Here is your mode selector. I said you had multiple driving modes. Let's take a look at exactly what those multiple driving modes are. You've got Tour, as you can see up there, Sport, and you have Snow and Ice. We're definitely not going to need Snow and Ice today, but Sport for sure as we get ready to go out for our test drive. Okay, we're going to hop out on the road here in Touring mode. And I'm just going to kind of sit back here just a little bit and we'll see how we do acceleration wise. It doesn't feel like it's doing a whole lot until I look down at the speedometer and realize I got up to the speed limit pretty quick there. So a pretty good little run. We'll put it into sport mode for our next shot here and see what the difference might be. I already feel a little bit of a difference just with the way the accelerator is operating and the way the vehicle's acting. And if you're wondering, what's the difference between these modes? What does it really do? Well, it basically just changes how the RPM rises as far as how quickly it rises for the engine. So if you want to go a little bit faster and get there a little bit quicker, well, that's the thing that you do. So we're going to hop out here and let this traffic get a little bit ahead of us and hope that this Toyota doesn't pull in front of me and cause an accident, but hey, that would have been on video if he had done that and I wouldn't have to worry about it. But just to be safe, I'm definitely going to drive defensively. If you want to learn to drive defensively, come to Shreveport, Louisiana. So I'm waiting to have a little bit of space here so that I can step on the pedal here. Now I'm doing about 30 miles an hour right now, so let's see how we do. Yeah, a little bit of a difference in acceleration. I can actually feel a difference. It's nothing major but definitely getting down the road very well. The leather wrapped steering wheel is nice and comfortable. And by the way, this is a fully adjustable steering wheel. It's manually adjustable, tilt and telescopically. And everything's adjustable here. The seat's very easy to get into the perfect driving position. And of course, you've got that power passenger seat over there. And I really like the brightness of this heads up display. A lot of people don't necessarily think about that, but when you're a race car driver like myself, I guess you just notice those kinds of things. And for me, I like to have a really bright heads up display because it just makes a difference. The overall feeling of driving this Envision, it does have a very sporty feel to it. It doesn't necessarily feel ultra high performance or anything along those lines, but we're not comparing it to a Mercedes-Benz GLC 63 or anything like that, the AMG model. But overall, just driving around, I like how confident it feels through the turns, driving down the road, the steering. It's not sports car-like by any means, but it is nice and responsive. But at the same time, you still have a really smooth ride here. And so to have pretty good handling and still have a comfortable ride quality, well, that's not the easiest thing to have work out in your favor because obviously a lot of the time with a more cushy suspension, well, the ride quality is good, but the handling isn't quite the same. 
but overall, I must say, I really like what I have here. Everything's easy to use. And I have said in my videos that I've done with the Volvo XC60 in the past, that once you get used to everything, that center screen is not that hard to use, but the majority of people will tell you that it is. Most likely they don't own one, but maybe some of them do. But a lot of the time I've found people that have the worst remarks on YouTube for these vehicles don't own one and maybe haven't even driven one. But overall, I have to give high marks. This Envision is fun to drive. It would be fun to see a pure all-out sport version of this model with maybe 300 horsepower under the hood or maybe 350 or something along those lines. With all-wheel drive and responsive steering, I think this would be a lot of fun to drive. In fact, in that case, if that were to ever happen, well, then we might compare it to the Land Rover Range Rover Velar SV autobiography, but we definitely would have to get up a lot more in horsepower to compare that, I guess, because you're talking about 560 horsepower there. But for being what it is, it's fun to drive, easy to learn the technology. I know I say this in a lot of my videos, so I apologize if you've heard this before, but maybe you're one of those people who's never had the kind of technology that we have here before and you've been afraid of it. I can understand that, but I'm going to tell you what, if you buy this and, and envision like this one or this, this one that you could buy at Morgan Buick GMC, well, it's not going to be hard for you to learn all of the different bells and whistles and the infotainment screen. It's real easy to use, real easy to learn, just an overall fun vehicle to drive, and it still has the capabilities of an SUV. All right, guys, so is this Buick Envision ST more sporty than the Volvo XC60? Well, based on information presented in the video, tell me what you think down in the comments. Personally, I have to say it really is, especially with all-wheel drive, you're gonna see a difference there. Obviously, you can get all-wheel drive with the XC60 as well. And while the XC60 isn't necessarily meant to be as sporty in the respect of as it is meant to be luxurious, it's still a pretty good comparison, I would say. So I have to say a special thanks to my friends here at Morgan Buick GMC for loaning me this Envision ST for the day and all of you for being kind enough to give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out another of the videos that's on the screen right now and I will see you there.